Okay, suppose you have a graph as shown on the screen here um, that where you have data, you plot the data, the data does not show a simple winning relationship but something other than that. And you want to find out what the relationship is between whatever this x y variable is and the x variable. All right, so the point of this tutorial is to show you an interesting technique where we can use logarithms um, to take a generic set of data, again, y's versus x's, and be able to find out what the power is uh, on this. We, one, one might assume that this is some sort of relationship where y is proportional to x squared. Okay, It could really be x to the 2.5 power or even x cubed or some variation of that. So we're, like I said, we're going to take a more exact technique rather than kind of guess and hope for the best. So this whole lesson is predicated on our graph following a fairly simple rule. And that is called a power function. Okay. Now you may not recognize power function by name, but it is something you have learned. It's a fairly simple type of function. Not sine, cosine, not even necessarily a polynomial. Okay, so again, let's just here's a smaller version of a graph. We have some y variable, we have some x variable, and it takes on sh some shape. So a power function is any relationship where the y variable, you know, could be power, acceleration, force, whatever, that depends on the x variable raised to some power n. Okay, n is a number. Generally, it's going to be one, two, three, maybe a half, maybe negative three halves. But technically, it can take on any value from negative infinity to positive infinity. That might seem extreme, but we just want to cover our basis here. But like I said, most of the times, it'll take on a small integer value. Okay, so let's look at the algebra of a power function in a little bit more detail here. Okay, so the general form of a power function is pretty straightforward. We say some y variable is equal to a constant, a number. Uh, that number could be a measurement, but it's essentially something that's not changing in the experiment, times your x variable, so your, generally your independent variable, raised to some power n. And ultimately what we want to solve for is the n. Okay, and you can find out what the k is as well. So for example, if we had a, a generic equation, v equals 4a plus 3, and we were to plot v versus a, this is a power function, a is to the first power, and of course we'd expect a straight line. Okay, in fact I haven't drawn that correctly, I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful here. Okay, since there is a y-intercept, it would be something like that. Another one that's less obvious, t equals 1 over f. That can be written as a power function because that's really just t is equal to f to the negative 1 power. So if we were to plot t versus f, we should recognize this as an inverse and get something like this. And then the last one, we have k and v are x and y variables. So we can see the v is to the square power. We know what the shape of that is, but I just want to recognize that the m, even though it's a measurement, is a constant in this case because it's not changing with the experiment. So if we were to plot that, we get something like that, a parabola, and ultimately we want to be able to translate this graph into a straight line and be able to find what this one half m represents or stands for. And we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna use logs to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. It's pretty straightforward. So the general question is, given a plot of data, so I haven't shown you any data yet, I've given you actually the results of the data, the graphs of an unknown power function. How does one determine a general equation? Like I said, we're going to utilize logarithms. I'll just call them logs for short here. Okay, so let's take our generic y equals kxn. What we want to do is essentially solve for n, and to do that, we're going to take the logarithm of both sides. So let's do that right now. So let's say the log of y, let's see if I get my pen working, equals the log, now we've got to take the log of the whole over here, log of kxn. Now you might say, well, what can I do with that? Well, if you recall, there is a multiplication rule in logs where this is essentially the log of k plus the log of x to the n. Alright, and 
then there's another rule that says if I have the log of a, a variable raised to some power, the power comes out front. So let me rewrite log of k plus n log of x. Okay, and that's actually all we really need to do for right now. You might say, well, wait, aren't we solving for n? And we could. We could subtract the log of k over to the side and divide by log of x and then do more uh, logarithmic identities. But we're going to do this, uh, we're going to take this form of the equation and look at it in a slightly different way. Okay, and so hopefully you'll catch on what we're going with. And in the next lesson, we'll actually get the data for that. Okay. So what I've done here is I've rewritten the equation from above, except that I've just reversed the log of k and the n log of x. And here's what we want to recognize. Suppose we were to take some data, right? Let's say we had two variables, x and y. And let's say x was 1, y was 2, x was 2, y was 3, and so on and so forth. If we apply x and y, we might get some sort of curve. However, if we were to plot the log of x right here versus the log of y, if you look at this equation right here, what we want you to recognize is this is really nothing more than y equals mx plus b. Okay, in other words, we should get a straight line. Not if we plot x versus y necessarily, but if we plot log of x versus log of y, we might get something that looks like this. Okay, that's what this form is telling us. And the beauty of this is that the n is equivalent to the slope of that line. That's the variable we're looking for, the power. Okay, so if this followed some quadratic relationship, we should get two for the slope of this. And now we know in terms of power function, this is a quadratic. If we were to find a slope when we got three, then we know it's a cubic function. Okay, so n is nothing more than the slope of the plot of not x versus y, but log of y versus log of x. And we can also get the value of k, which was the number in front of our power function. Remember, our power function is y equals k x to the n. We can get the value of k by recognizing that the log of k is nothing more than the y-intercept here. Okay, so the y-intercept gives us the log of k, so to get k, we just do the inverse log or the anti-log. So the next lesson, we'll look at this with um, some sample data and show how you can use Excel to do exactly what we've proposed here.